Thank you, God. Send the glory. Simple, I give you. Lord, I give Thank you, Lord. Uh -huh. Good morning to each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in and sharing once again. Uh, this is Dr. George Peely III and St. John the Mighty Fortress bringing you another virtual experience of morning manna on this beautiful Sunday morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Share, like, comment, say good morning, how you doing, amen, to each and every one of you. So grateful um, for you to be able to be present with us in this virtual worship experience. As always, uh, we share in our morning manner prayer, prayer requests, prayer concerns. We're always praying for our families that are bereaved, uh, those uh, that are caretakers uh, of uh, others that are suffering ailments, um, as well as individuals that are just, uh, that just need your name lifted up to God. Uh, join us now as we go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you, we bless you on this wonderful morning a day that we've never seen before and one we'll never see again. Now, Lord, we ask God that as we share your word, um, that your word will not return void. Your word will be encouragement. Your word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Your word will lift up, bow down heads. Your word, Lord Jesus, will allow people um, to look up and live. And as always, we give you glory. and We just thank you for this opportunity uh, to share Lord, uh, through this virtual experience, bless, strengthen, and keep everyone, Lord, uh, who will be watching, sharing, and caring. Uh, this we ask in the sign of the cross, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Type in and say amen, amen, and amen. As we now um, are entering uh, this beautiful season here in our region, we're grateful that God has kept us through um uh, the months that others call winter uh, and as now as we're into spring and summer and here uh, they kind of um, intermingle and intertwine and you can't tell one from the other that um, as we are experiencing uh, many of our localities and our states uh, opening back up uh, full-scale uh, individuals attempting to uh, deal with some type of normalcy um, that there for many of us are issues uh, that we're still grasping and wrestling with um, we've uh, lost uh, so many people um, in one way or another physically spiritually or mentally or socially uh, during this pandemic season uh, that it would appear as if that we've been in a never-ending battle um, but the theme this morning for Morning Manor um, that I just want you to type uh, as you're watching us and comment. Um, always remember that whatever you're dealing with, the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours, but God's. Remember that. Uh, sometimes we can think things so personal uh, to a point uh, where it oppresses and depresses us. Um, but say to yourself, whatever issue that you're dealing with, whatever situation, uh, whatever pain, whatever struggle, tell yourself that this battle is not mine, it's God's. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verses 15 through 17 uh, is the basis for our morning manna this morning and it states, and he said, hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them, behold, they come up from the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeril. You shall not need to fight in the battle, set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that amazing? Uh, that right now, today, 
uh, the issue that Jehoshaphat was dealing with um, is upon many of us as we speak. Uh, the king Jehoshaphat that was reigning over Judah uh, during that period in uh, the history uh, of that nation. Uh, there were options that King Jehoshaphat became uh, and confronted with and became quite clear as he faced uh, an army and he faced an army from three different countries and these countries formulated a large multitude to come against them with a planned attack against Judah and it's unbelievable with no resources no rescue and nowhere to run Jehoshaphat's options were simple give up back up or stand up and even in our own lives yes as we face trying times even as we speak when there will be mountains that you will have to climb burdens that you will have to bear doubts that you will have to overcome side roads that you will have to avoid fears that you will have to conquer hardships that you will have to face pressures my god that you will have to endure and you must make a decision whether to give up bag up or stand up yes i don't care who you are what race creed nationality uh, religious affiliation or sexual orientation dark storm clouds will hang low over all of our lives at some time or other Sorrows will seem unbearable. The enemy will seem so large and so near. The hurts will seem, my brothers and sisters, to penetrate so deeply. The tears will rapidly and persistently flow down the cheek. The world will be so enticing and inviting. Friends, they are going to seem few. Uh, family, nowhere to be found. Your hands will hang down low. Your knees will tremble and knock. Your legs may even become weak. Your shoulders, because of the oppression and the depression that you're under, will droop and sag. Your eyes will become dim. Your back will get bent so low and your heart will grow faint. Still, a decision must be made to give up, back up, or stand up. Yes, Jehoshaphat was going against all odds to arrive and to attempt to come to a successful end. How did he, dealing with the lack of resources, the lack of military effort, as well as a lack of a planned defense, how did he arrive at the decision to endure until the end? I hear you and I'm glad you asked. John Maxwell uh, in his Leadership Bible points out at least seven steps to kind of help us focus on uh, Jehoshaphat and what he took to accomplish a God-given victory. And as you go forth and really understanding that whatever battle that you're fighting, um, not to take it personally, you just have to be there. But it's God's battle. Um, number one, uh, one of the first steps is he fought his fear. Learn how to, to fight your fear. What does that mean in fighting your fear? Fear. What does that that means? Um, first of all, that you should not become paralyzed by your problems. All of us have insurmountable problems that we have faced, will face, and for many of us are currently facing. But don't allow the problems to paralyze you to a point that you're not able to function enough to be able to stay calm enough to think. That's the key. 
That is not to say that you're not going to be fearful or afraid. It's not to say that you're not going to have um, the emotions of nervousness and, and all of those things that go along with it and doubts. But you must get yourself to a space and place where you can get calm enough to think. There is an acronym that we talk about, H-A-L-T, HALT, um, that when you're making decisions, don't make them if you're too hungry, too angry, uh, too lonely, and too tired. Uh, that get yourself to a place where you can be calm enough to, to pray and think your way through. All right. And the, the second step goes along with number two. He says he, you know, not only he fought his fear, but Maxwell says he sought the Lord. He sought the Lord. That means that as he was able to calm himself enough to think that I need to pray. Let me tell you something. You will either pray now or you'll pay later. Um, because... Uh, when we act outside of the parameters of wisdom and, and knowledge that can be given to us spiritually, um, and we put and we take matters into our own hands, um, if we don't pray now, sooner or later we will pay for it later. And so uh, Jehoshaphat knew that they were the chosen of God, um, that God had been with them previously. And who better to go to and to, to deal with this and to ask for help but the one who created them. And that is important as well. Um, that there are times uh, that you have to be brutally honest with yourself. You don't know it all. You don't know it all, okay? I don't know. As good as I look, I don't know it all. I don't know it all. There's some things that I know. I may act like it. I may look like it. But I'm honest with myself. There are things and where I am today is not because of all of me, but beginning to get the right people around me and advisement and wisdom and learning from others. And many times we, we fight unnecessary battles because we refuse uh, to get knowledge and information. And we always are trying to take matters into our own hands and deal with them. You don't have to do that. Uh, whether you are a single parent, whether you are an individual um, uh, that's on, on a job and, and you are just so disgruntled, um, you may be in a situation where as you feel that you've been taken advantage of, uh, you know, uh, financially or in a business transaction, um, move beyond the shame, move beyond the embarrassment, move beyond the fact um, that you may have made a mistake um, because if you are a human being, um, that's just what humans do. Um, learn how um, uh, to, to pray and to seek wise counsel, you know, and you don't have to do it by yourself. He prayed, which leads me to number three, as Maxwell stated, um, that because of him praying, seeking wise counsel, um, he fought his fear, he sought the Lord, and he brought the synergy. Synergy means bringing, you know, entities, things, people, um, energy, uh, synchronizing all of that together. That he brought the people in. Um, because, see, it, even though he's the leader, um, the war was going to affect um, those who, who he was leading just as much as himself. So it wasn't that he needed to sit uh, back, you know, on his throne and try to, you know, figure this thing out and, and keep it quiet and keep it hushed, you know, that this is something that affected the whole nation. And so as he began to deal and to think and to pray, he was led to bring the nation together. And when he brought them together, the joy of it is that he proclaimed and he set a fast um, throughout Judah laid out the information. He told them what was what was going on. Um, he did it in a way that was calm um, because I've learned something. I remember years ago I was at a uh, conference um, that was uh, hosted by Bishop T.D. Jakes in Dallas, Texas. And he says that, you know, even when you're leading and you're dealing with fear and you're dealing with nervousness, that as you stand before the people, never let them see you sweat. 
because people are depending on you. They may know that you're fearful and that their things are upset, but you ain't got to get up and sweat among them. If the only thing you're able to tell them is, you know, that the next step we're going to put the right foot forward. There are people who are depending on you to be calm to lead them and to keep them together. And that's so important. Your family, you, you feel that pressure, you know, maybe even on your job. Um, it's important. And as you share information, information becomes motivation. And so the people, uh, when he called them to come together to fast, uh, they were praying, seeking the Lord. Uh, he said, this is what was going to happen. This is what we're going to do. Um, and when they began to do that, uh, the next step is he caught the vision that after, you know, he fought his fear, after he, you know, began, he sought the Lord, he brought the synergy, he caught the vision. You got to hear with a spiritual ear. You got to hear with the spiritual ear. And so as you are beginning to do all these things and God speaks, and, and I'm not talking about when you close your eyes and you humming and all that and then God speaks to you in your head. You know God speaks through people. God will speak through uh, having you read something or have something flash across the screen or through a song. God's words come to us in so many ways. And so we must be open to hear him anywhere and anytime. And the joy of it is that when you hear him, whether it's through a book, whether it's through a song, whether it's through someone else, you know that's the answer that you were looking for. How many of you all know what I'm talking about? There are times, you know, that you've prayed about something and you've gone on about your business. And then in the course of the day or the week, something comes up and it hits your spirit. It was like, that is what I was waiting for. That's what I needed. He caught the vision. Hear, go through your life with a spiritual hear. Um, and, and the other thing is, and that if you don't hear nothing, don't do nothing. Stop taking matters into your own hands or feeling as though that you've got to rush to make a decision or that the pressure from others is causing you to make a decision that you will regret later on. Nobody has to make you decide anything that you're not ready for. Caught the vision here with a spiritual ear. Don't go up. What are you saying, Lee? Don't go up until God what shows up. Now, um, he bought the idea, you know, again, um, after he caught the vision, he bought the idea. And so when he bought the idea, um, again, he shared it with others. Now, let me tell you this about people. Um, and that is why it's important to bring people with you along the journey. Don't wait until, you know, the crisis is so unbearable. You know, begin to share because remember, information brings motivation. Begin to share along the way. And because let me tell you something, people will buy into you before they buy into your ideal vision. That's just the way it is. Your family, your, your, your children, um, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, those that you mentor, um, they're not just around you just because you're so smart and intelligent. You know, again, you know, unless you're a Google guru, I mean, anyone can find out information that you have. But what it is, is they bought into who you are. Not what you know, but who you are. And people, you know, buy into you before they even buy into the idea of vision. Because remember, after when the people were together, after bowing down, he and the people, you know, they, they bowed down to God. But then they were able to stand up to their opposition. And that's what he led to them to do. That was so wonderful and awesome. Number six. After that, after he bought the idea, he taught the plan that he reiterated. He shared it over and over and over again. Stop uh, getting disappointed in people who you think ought to assume something that you only know. Isn't that crazy? I'm walking around, I got all the knowledge, and I'm upset with everyone else because they're not doing what needs to be done. They don't know unless you share, okay? You know, everybody's not a prophet or a prophetess and they just can't speak with globes and all that kind of, or palm readers, all right? Sometimes you have to audibly say things. You know, this is, you know, this is not, you know, Star Trek or whatever, you know. 
and you know, and, and we just are not able to relate through osmosis right now. Okay, so you've got to be audible. You have to make it plain. Make it plain. I don't care how old people are or how much education they have. Make it plain enough. He taught the plan. Preparation becomes before execution. Prepared people equals a powerful position. Always remember that. Prepared people equals a powerful, powerful position. And lastly, he got the victory. He got the victory. He got the victory. And when you've done all that you can do, there's nothing else you can do. You know, allow God to do the rest. He, he, he did, I mean, everything. I mean, he fought his fear. You know, he sought the Lord. You know, he caught the vision, he bought the idea, he brought, you know, all of these, I mean, he's just doing all, he did all that he could do, and when he could not do no more, God did the rest. He got the victory. Why? Because when you've done all that you can do, just show up, and what will God do? God will go up for you. When you realize that the battle is not yours, but God's, you will have the courage to face to face what? To face your every fear. To face your enemies. You will have the faith to move mountains. You will have the grace to endure our afflictions. You will have the boldness to withstand persecutions. You will have the wisdom to solve any of your problems. You will have the strength to bear your heavy burdens and the determination to overcome various temptations. Remember, the battle is not yours, it's God's. Now, we extend this our invitation to each of you that if you desire to be a part of the family of God after you listened to this powerful uh, morning manner message of moving you from fear to victory, repeat these words with us. Dear Lord, I am a sinner. I'm asking you today to become ahead of my life. Please forgive me from all of my sins. I believe you died on the cross for me and three days later you were raised from the grave and because I believe today I am saved. Now Lord, please fill me with the gift of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Type in, I'm saved. God's blessings, you know, of peace and joy be upon each and every one of you. Now, you know, as you Take this moment to meditate on the battle is not yours but God's. Let us hear the sights, sounds, none other than same time. Let your spirit take over me. Saturate me. Cover me. Cleanse me. Your spirit. Oh. How many know you want him to ask it to rain on me tonight? Do I have any witnesses in the mighty fortress? Lord, ask, ask him to rain on me. I need you to rain on me and my children. I need you to shower down your blessings because he's had blessings with just your name on it. Because what God has for you is for you. Do I have a witness tonight? Somebody say, rain on me, rain on me, rain on me, rain on me, rain on me. God's blessings. Whoa. Thank you, amen, for sharing and caring with each one of us. And as we go forth um, in this continued worship experience, uh, you may now share in your virtual giving uh, and your virtual commitment through the 3T ministry, the time, talent, and time of St. John the Mighty Fortress. There are several ways to give to support the ministries of St. John Baptist Church, the Mighty Fortress, your time, talent, and tithe. We've made virtual giving so easy. Just text St. John SAV to 73256 and follow the prompts. That's St. John SAV 73256 and follow the prompts. Or you can call the number right on your screen to speak to someone and give your credit card information. 912-844-1872. That's 912-844-1872. 
or feel free to mail in your cash, donations, and tithes to St. John Baptist Church, The Mighty Fortress, 2415 Eastern Avenue, Savannah, Georgia, 31406. And to give your time and talent or to find out more information on everything going on at St. John, The Mighty Fortress, including our virtual worship experiences, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Periscope, or go to stjohnsavannah.org. Ah, again, thank you for your consistency and constancy in supporting uh, the vision and the mission, the ministry, as we help the least left out the lost and the last of St. John Baptist Church, the Mighty Fortress. Again, as you go now um, into your other various uh, virtual worship experiences, remember today's morning matter that the battle is not yours. It is God's. And until we meet again, join us every day for Mighty Fortress Moments right here, as well as Thoughtful Tuesday, every Tuesday uh, evening uh, right here in sharing. And now as we are preparing uh, for the second worship experience of this Lord's Day, right here on the beautiful campus of 2415 East Darren Avenue, the soul of Savannah, St. John the Mighty Fortress, come as you are in the family car. Uh, we are now allowing individuals um, that you're able to bring your chairs and sit next to your vehicles in a socially distanced um, situation and as you enjoy um, the beautiful weather and scenery and as we worship God and his holiness of what he's created um, it gives us a deeper sense of appreciation um, that even though it may be the worst of times it is the best of times so God's blessings to each and every one of you uh, continuously hit us up on our uh, Facebook page as well as Instagram Twitter um, also um, come and stop by stjohnsavannah.org until we meet again remember the three words that we always share with you all is well thank you God it's in the glory. I give you glory. It's simple, I give you. Lord, I give Thank you. Praise.